I'm here, and hi, I hope you are there. Welcome to this Halloween Eve, the day before Halloween. Actually, Halloween is All Hallows Eve, I think they used to call it, and that means it's the day before the Day of the Dead, which is the day after, November 1st. Anyway, here we go. Good morning, first grade, are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Oh, good. I'm glad you're here. The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. You can say it with me. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hooray for the life of a Kona kid tumbling the sunlit ways. Someone came knocking at my wee small door. Someone came knocking, I'm sure, sure, sure. I opened, I listened, I looked from left to right. Not a creature was stirring in the still dark night. Have you seen the ghost of John? Long white bones and the rest all gone. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? Boo! Cats prowl. Little poem for today. Cats prowl. Winds howl, witches ride, puppies hide, ghosts quiver, children shiver. Gee, it's keen on Halloween. One more time. You can try to say it with me if you want. There's some rhymes. Prowl, how prowl means sneak around, and howl, ho. Hide, a oh, ride and hide. You know what those mean, of course. And the next rhyme is quiver and shiver. And they kind of mean the same thing. Quiver is like and shiver is like cold. Like a little bit very similar. Quiver and shiver. Qu -qu Quiver starts with a Q. And then keen and Halloween. Keen is an interesting word. It, it means really sharp. It also means uh, really excellent sometimes. And um, so it can mean really intense in a way. There's a few different meanings of it. It's a strange use of it in this case, I think. but. It means really great, I think, in this case. Anyway, here we go. Cats, ready? Cats prowl. Winds howl. Witches ride. And puppies hide. Ghosts quiver. Children shiver. Gee, it's keen on Halloween. That's my poem for today. All right, I think Jackie is here. Let's check and see if she has arrived. Yes, she has. Let me put her here so we can see all together for a moment. Good morning, Jackie. Are you there? Oh, yeah, are you ready for me? I am. You are on TV. Have you, <laughs> have you counted down from like 40 yet? We, we, I, can, I can count down if you're still in the middle of something. I, I, used, I stopped after my poem. But I can do I can do backwards counting while you're getting ready. Is that good for you? Oh, th thank you so much. Sure. Yes, that's yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. I'll be ready. Right. Right. Here we go. Okay. Counting okay. down okay. from 100. Okay. 100, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 82, 81, 
80, 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 59, 59, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off, zero. And back to the beginning. Forward and backward counting. All right, Auntie Jackie, shall we do one more thing while you continue, or are you ready? I am ready. Estoy lista. Estoy lista, oh. It's Espanol, for I am ready. Oh, my goodness, wait till you see Auntie Jackie. There she is. Hello, Auntie Jackie. Morning. Good morning, Kiki. Hello, Mr. Coulter. Thank Hello. you for sharing I have my mask on, but I might not keep it on because it's a little spooky, isn't it? <laughs> my great. mommy gave me this mask, and my mommy is not alive anymore, so it's a very happy day for me. And what I find enjoyable in this time of year, because it's Halloween, is that the day after Halloween, we celebrate the people who are not long, are no longer with us in their bodies. They're here in their spirit, so we call it the Day of the Dead. And they may be dead from their bodies, but they're alive in the spirit. Here comes the mask coming off. So when um, we were talking about insects yesterday, there were some insects that love to eat the dead things. So when the insect eats the dead branches and the dead um, shells and the dead things, the dead seed pods and the dead leaves, and they eat it up and they poop it out, the insects poop, or we say insects droppings, those become life for the plant. So it's a whole big cycle. So when we die, we still come back in some way. Today, I wanted to talk with you about something a little bit different than the insects we've been talking about. We were talking yesterday, I was talking yesterday about with whom we share the soil. But today I'm gonna to go a little bit different and I'm gonna invite you to um, Watch now, and then later, you're going to try and do this. But you're going to get one of your jars from your garden box, one of the jars that I recommended that you have collected. If you didn't get one yet, it's okay. You can get one now. You're going to go out in the garden or into the beach, wherever you can get some pebbles. You're going to put four pebbles in the jar. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you this um, activity to do with the pebbles that I want you to think about the day after Halloween and the day after that and any time you need. And I'm offering you this because I notice that when we're in school and the day after Halloween comes and all the kids come back to school with Halloween in their heads and Halloween in their bellies, things are kind of cranky, right? So they've eaten the sugar. The sugar makes them very excited for a few hours. But afterwards, our body has to try and figure out what to do with the sugar and it it creates um, in our systems um, something to work on. So the body's trying to get the sugar out and work through it. We get cranky because that's the effects of sugar. It makes us up high, and then it lets us down a bit low. So the pebbles are going to help us in this process. What I'm going to do right now is for you to just imagine you have a pebble, and I'm going to guide us through this activity that I can call the pebble meditation. So we're going to do it right now, and then afterwards, when you get a chance to collect some things from the garden, you're going to get four pebbles. And then you can try and remember to do this on your own 
after Halloween when you're feeling cranky or any other time when you want to settle down and feel back to yourself. And if you have family listening, they might want to listen to or they're going to remember these four pebbles. So you're going to take your four pebbles, you're going to sit down, and you're going to put your four pebbles right next to you on the left side of you. So that would be on the side, um, on your left side. So you're going to sit down and breathe steadily three times. You can even close your eyes. So I'm going to guide us through that right now. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to ask you to join me. And breathe in once, let it exhale. And two times, breathe in and out. One more time, in and out. We pick up the one pebble in our left hand. We take the pebble, we close our eyes, and we imagine that we are a flower. Breathing in. I am a fresh flower. I see myself as a flower. I breathe in and I breathe out. I breathe in. I see myself as a flower. I breathe out. Fresh. In flower. Out fresh. Put the pebble in your right hand. Put it down on your right side. Pick up the next pebble. Now you're just imagining it right now because we're just going through it with practice. Pick up the left pebble. Breathe in. I feel myself as a mountain. Breathe out. I feel solid. In mountain. Out solid. In mountain, out solid. Put the pebble in your right hand, put it down next to you. Take the third pebble with your left hand, hold it in your hand. Breathe in, I see myself as still water, calm water on the lake. I breathe out. Breathe in, still water, out, calm, in, water, out, calm. You're going to put your pebble in your right hand. You're going to put it down next to you. The fourth pebble, we pick it up with our left hand. We breathe in. I picture myself as space. We breathe out. I feel light. In space. Out light. In space. Out. Pebble in right hand, pebble to the pile. One big breath in, one big breath out. You can open your eyes. This is the pebble meditation. And we use the pebbles to picture ourselves as the flower, the mountain, the water, and the space. Think about how you feel right now. Just take a big breath. You can say it out loud. How do I feel? How do I feel? Oof, I feel calm. I invite you guys to go get some pebbles today. Put them in your jar. Put them in anything. Put them in a cup. And then get them ready for any time you're going to feel cranky, any time you feel good, any time you feel blue, because the breathing and the visualizing is something we can do to have that calm feeling come back to us because we are part of that mountain and we are part of the air and we are part of the flower because all things together are working for the good so i am going to wish you a very happy and safe weekend i hope you have some fun times and that you remember that no matter what 
You can come back to happy and calm when you breathe. Aloha. Aloha, Auntie Jackie. Thank you so much. I love your mask. That's so fun. Thank you, and thank you for the time. Thank you. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Daddy. Dad. Daddy's still teaching. All right, next we will do hand clapping with Hope, who is here. Ready, Hope? Here we go. I don't know if you remember this one. This is Tiny Tim. Wait. Uh, Miss Lucy had a baby. She named him Tiny Tim. She put him in the bathtub to see if he could swim. He ate up, drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. He tried to eat the bathtub, but it wouldn't go down his throat. Miss Lucy called the doctor. The doctor called the nurse. Nurse called the, the alligator purse. <clears throat> Out went the doctor. Out went the nurse. Out went the lady with the alligator purse. Now Tiny Tim is stuck home in bed with soap in his throat and bubbles in his head. There we go. Thanks, Hope. And Hope and I live in the same household, so we are not wearing masks because we are already in the same bubble, as they say. Thanks, Hope. All right. Now we're gonna go back to the, um, how many days in school? This is the 40th day in school, so you can see this chalk is a little behind. And I'm going to, that was, I'm going to finish it up to where we are now. So that was 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. That's where we were yesterday. And today is the 40th day. <clears throat> 10, 20, 30, 40 days of school so far. 40 days of school. How many more days of school until we get to 100? Let's check. This will be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 when we fill them all up. But so far we have 10, 20, 30, 40. That means however many are over here are how many left until we get to 100. Well, we could count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We could do it that way. I'm going to draw a little line between the upper ones and the lower ones. We could count them like this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And everything left over there is how many are left until we get to 100, like I said. So let's count them, 10, because we know if this row is filled up, it's 10, just like these rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 60 more days until we reach 100 days of school. 40 done so far, and 60 till we, till we finish our 100 days. And when you think about it, if you already know that 5 and 5 is 10, and you also know that 6, put one thumb over there, and 4 is 10, 6 and 4 is 10, you also might know that 60 and 40 is 10. It works the same way. When we count with our fingers, 10 with me, please. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Each finger counts for 10 in that case. So in this case, we have 40 days finished, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 days yet to go. So counting forwards and backwards by 10 can be very useful if you want to know how many days are left until we reach to 100. All right, and that's good enough for that. Um, I want to do the, uh, I will get back to Baba Yaga and what happens next in our story, but first um, I want to do one more um, ug, ug sound, and we are also, I think, Hopefully we will have time to draw a picture today. We will. So the UG family, we've been using a, the letter U a lot 
recently. And uh, uh, uh sound, it makes an uh sound like an uh umbrella, umbrella. We use that umbrella to help us remember what the short vowel sound is for you. And um, so I'm going to use that sound again, uh, uh, uh. And I thought of another letter that could go at the end and we could make the UG family. UG, oh, UG. I'm going to put a line there because it's, that's all the words that we're going to write are going to rhyme with UG. And the first one I thought of, if we go through the alphabet, a B. So B, B, does B, UG make a word? Mm -hmm. It does. B, UG makes a word. Bug. And let's think about the, the alphabet. Let's see, C, CUG. Mm, I don't think that's a word. What about the next one, A, B, C, D, 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 D Doug? Oh yeah, D, UG makes a word. Oops. D, U, G makes a word, D dug. I dug a hole in the sand. Let's see, D, D E, F, fug, mm, gug, mm, E, F, G, H, ha, ha. Oh, ha, ha. What word is that? Ha. Uh, g. Ha, ug, ha, ug. Hug makes a word. Hug is a good word to have. Uh, H I J jug. Oh, jug. Jug is a word, isn't it? Jug of water. J uh, G jug. A B C D E F G H I J K cug mm, lug. Oh, lug. That means that's like a hard thing to carry. I have to lug something up the hill. Lug it up the hill hard job of lugging something up the hill. Um, let's see, L, M, mug, oh, mug. Mug is a word for sure. Change colors again. Mug. Mug, I have a mug of coffee or hot chocolate, or whatever the case may be. Mug, 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 mug. M N nug mm, pug pug is a kind of a dog, isn't it? P -p pug pug nose means a squished nose. That's why they call that dog a pug, I think. Uh, pug. I guess I could write pug up there. Pug pug dog has a squishy, squished-looking nose. P uh, P Q quag rug. Oh rug rug makes a word. Rrr. Uh, g, rug, r, uh, g, r, uh, g, rug, rug is definitely a word. Rug, um, tug, oh, sug, I've missed S, sug, don't think that's a word. T, 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 ug is a word. Tug reminds me of this word lug because to tug something is to pull it really hard. And there's a thing called a tugboat, a very strong little boat that can push or pull a big barge full of whatever in the water. Tug, tugged on the rope. Tug of war, you've heard of that game, with pulling on the ropes. Tug, uh, wug, a vu, let's see, T-U-V, vug, mm, wug, w-w-wug. Don't know that that's a word. X, xug, zug, yug, mm. I don't hear any more words in the UG family, um, at least not ones with have only uh, one letter in the front. There are others like slug, but that has two letters in the front. S O U G. Four sounds in that word. Slug. Slug. S O U G. S O U G. Slug. But we're not getting into those yet. Um, although you should feel free to think of any more that you can that rhyme with these words. All right, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to remind us what happened in Baba Yaga so far, and then we will try to draw a picture of Baba Yaga's hut with the chicken legs, which I drew already, 
and I will draw it again on the blackboard as you draw it at home. And, but first I have to finish the story. So the first part of the story was the Vasilisa was given a doll by her mother before she had passed on. And the doll was a blessing and a promise to watch over her if she, as long as she took good care of it. So she took good care of the little doll, gave her a little food and a little milk each night, and the doll then was supposed to take care of her in, re in return. And it was a promise that her mother made her. So she was sent off by her unkind stepmother to do an errand to go get light from Baba Yaga. Now, this stepmother knew that Baba Yaga was known for eating all the bad children in the world. <laughs> So I used to tell children all the time, be good or something will, bad will happen to you, like Baba Yaga will eat you, or Santa will not bring you any presents, or things like that. But we know the world is really full of love, of course, mostly. So, but we do have to protect ourselves, don't we, with our little special things that we use for us, as uh, things that make us feel better, like little rag dolls. So she went with her little rag doll, thinking that no harm would come to her because she had her protection with her. And she went all the way to Baba Yaga's house, deep, deep in the dark, dark, scary forest. That's how the story goes. And as she arrived there, Baba Yaga, she saw the hut was walking around on its chicken legs. And then it knelt down and the Baba Yaga came out and demanded to know what Vasilisa was doing there and what she wanted, and Vasilisa wanted to run away, but she couldn't make herself run away. Her feet felt frozen to the spot, and finally she stammered, uh, 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 I, I'm here to get some fire, if it please you, auntie. And Baba Yaga said, what's your name? And she told her her name, and Baba Yaga said, well, you can call me Babushka. That made Vasilisa feel a little better, because Babushka is a kind old grandmother kind of a name. Anyway, Vasilisa went inside and, and uh, Baba Yaga commanded the doors to lock and they locked and the chicken-legged house walked around in the yard and Vasilisa knew she was kind of stuck. Well, now, Baba Yaga said, well, if you can do, I have some tasks for you. If you can show me that you are smart and clever and hardworking and don't whine and complain, then I will set you free and give you the light. But if you are not those things, I'm testing to see if you are a good little girl or not. If you are not able to show me that you are uh, hardworking and clever enough to do the tasks I give you, then I shall eat you. And so poor Vasilisa said that she agreed to that because what choice, choice did she have? She knew she didn't have any choice. So the first thing Baba Yaga asked her to do was to fetch her some supper. Well, Vasilisa was a little relieved because that seemed uh, within her capabilities. So she went and fetched uh, Baba Yaga some bread and cheese and a tankard of brown ale. And Baba Yaga ate the cheese and bread and said, well, that's pretty good. And then she squeezed Vasilisa's arm and said, eh, pretty soon I'll be eating a nice roast that's sliced thin and still pink in the middle. And Vasilisa thought, oh no, I hope she is not going to eat me. And so then she fell asleep. And oh, but first she said, Tomor tomorrow when I'm gone, you have to tidy the yard, clean the house and the hut, and uh, make soup, some pumpkin soup for my dinner. And Vasilisa says, oh, that sounds, I can do that. And then she said, and before you finish, you need to also sort out all the black beans from the white beans in that bag over there. Huge bag of beans full of all mixed up black and white beans. So Vasilisa didn't know how she was going to handle that, but first she, as, as uh, oh, and then Baba Yaga left for the day and she flew up the chimney and grabbed her mortar and pestle. She flies around in a giant mortar and she uses the pestle to steer. And she flies around the sky and went about her business like that. And then uh, she, Vasilisa tidied up everything and started making the soup and things were looking good. But then she opened the bag of peas and beans and she saw that there were so many in there, looked like a million of them and she did not know how she could ever finish sorting all those out. And she turned to her rag doll and she asked, what in the world am I going to do? How can I ever? 
and the rag doll said, don't fear, all will be well. Just as that happened, the white horseman who had passed Vasilisa on the road, on the, in the forest road, came galloping up to the house. Vasilisa first thought it was Baba Yaga and thought, oh no, now she's back and I'm not ready. So, but he came galloping, jumped over the skull-headed fence and galloped around the, the hut three or four times and then galloped away. Vasilisa thought, oh no, I thought he was going to rescue me and now he's just gone. And she turned around and she saw to her amazement that all of the peas and beans were seemed to be magically all sorted out. But when Baba Yaga came back and saw that she had finished the task, she couldn't su suppress her surprise when she saw how, how could she have sorted all those things out. But she got herself together and said, well, I see that you've cooked and cleaned and you've even sorted those out. You must be a very hardworking girl to have done all of that. Hmm. Well, tomorrow I would like you to make pea soup with the white beans and here you go fetch water from the spring with this bucket. And she handed her a bucket with full of holes. It wasn't even really a bucket at all. It was a sieve, like a colander, like a thing that's meant to strain your noodles. And uh, she gave that with an evil smile in her eye and said, tomorrow and I, when I'm gone, that's what you have to do. Again, Vasilisa did not know what to do. Baba Yaga flew up the chimney, flew around in her mortar and pestle. I don't know what she was doing all day, perhaps looking for bad children to, to eat. Um, uh, but anyway, she got back uh, and Vasilisa was supposed to have filled all this water. Well, Vasilisa went to the, the well and couldn't imagine how in the world she would ever do this. And the red horseman came galloping up. The other horseman who had passed her on the road came galloping up, grabbed the sieve out of her hand, threw it through the open window of the hut, and galloped away. Vasilisa didn't know what to do, so she ran back into the hut to get the thing, and she saw that the entire tank in the house had been filled with water. Well, Baba Yaga came back, stuck her bony finger inside the water tank, and saw that it was fresh water, and she said, hmm, you must be a very hardworking girl to have accomplished that task. I wonder how in the world she thought, how did she do it? Well, tonight is your final task, Vasilisa, she, Baba Yaga told her. Tonight, your task, and she thought of something impossible for her to do because she really thought she wanted to eat her. Your job is to count all the stars in the sky. Vasilisa did not know how she would do that. Stay up all night and count the stars in the sky. So she went up onto the roof and looked up at the sky and started counting the stars. But the chicken-legged house kept walking around and she would get confused as to how many, whether she'd count to this one or that one, and she would one, two, three, four, Five, all the way to 100 and then uh, lost track and not sure if she counted this one or that one or not and so she would start over and she was getting worse and worse feeling in her heart worrying about what would happen next well the black horseman galloped up silent as a shadow and came up to her and whispered as if in a dream the number of stars in the sky and he told her can't tell you the real number because it's a secret. But he whispered her the exact number, and Baba Yaga knew that secret. So when Baba Yaga came back in the morning to find Vasilisa, Vasilisa said, shall I tell you the number of stars in the sky? Baba Yaga was surprised by her confidence and said, yes, but if you tell me even one too many or one too few, I will eat you. So surprised when Vasilisa told her the number of stars in the sky, she said, Ah! Screamed a terrible scream. How did you do it? And then she, a knowing look came into her eye, 
and she said, you know, I'm guessing it was morning and day who helped you with the other tasks, wasn't it? Vasilisa suddenly realized that the white horseman was day, the red horseman was morning, and the black horseman was night. And Baba Yaga said, well, if morning and day and night chose to help you, then your heart must be centered and your spirit must be in harmony with the universe. So you must be a very good child indeed. I will go about my business today. When I come back, I will not expect any more tasks from you. When it is night, I will come back and I will give you one of the skulls from my fence that lights the night. And you may take that back to your home. And they should light up your stepmother and stepsisters quite well, she said. Well, sure enough, Baba Yaga came back. She was true to her word, and Vasilisa's doll had told her she is not capable of a lie. She always tells the truth, and she does have a kind streak in her heart. She is capable of kindness. And so Vasilisa was given a skull from Baba Yaga's fence post and took it back down the road to her home. And she was surprised that her stepmother and sisters had not kindled some sort of fire by then, but they sat together in complete darkness. She opened the door and walked in and said, here, see this light. And she brought it out, but the second the light touched her stepmother and sisters, completely turned to dust and disappeared forever. Well, when the father came home, he saw Vasilisa and didn't know what had happened to the stepmother and sisters and figured they had just run away. Well, he didn't miss them much. He did love his daughter so, and they lived together happily until one day Vasilisa found her own way in the world and traveled forth and made her own. all happy for the rest of their days, of course. So it is, and so it was, and so it shall be. Now, main lesson book, crayons, and we will do our drawing. So you need all your stick crayons and block crayons, whatever you have, and I will show you the drawing I did. And it's a little tricky. I'm going to make it a little bit different from what I drew on my paper. I will show you now what I drew on my paper. I'm going to make it a little bit different, but I will have it here so that you can see what I am working from. Here we go. Oh yes, Baba Yaga. This was fun to draw. It was very fun. So there's Baba Yaga standing in her doorway. That was the trickiest part, probably, is drawing Baba Yaga. But we will do it. I think and the cat was a little tricky, and I drew some decorations on her house. And I used my block crayon at the end to kind of go over the whole thing to make it seem nighttime. There are the chicken-legged house legs and the um, skulls and bones that she uses for our fence. So we're going to do a couple things a little bit differently than this so that we have enough room, because it was tricky to get my black crayon to do what I wanted it to do, especially in those little places like that with a cat. So we'll make that door window a little bigger, and a few other things will be a little bit different. Okay, let's see. Put this right here. And I guess I'll pull that back a little bit. That's not a good plan. I think it's, let's just go up here, actually. And I want to get that up a little higher, actually, but I guess it'll do. All right. Let me see. So, let's get a little higher into this. All right. So, this is my main lesson page. And I think, even though I wrote Baba Yaga last, I think we will write Baba Yaga first. Um, so, I chose a brown stick crayon for my writing. 
And we have to finish the word. If I put a little mark in the middle there, just so I see where the middle is, just a faint little line, so you can see where the middle of this page is. We have B-A-B-A, -B -A, ba, ba, and then ya, ga. So we can write four different A's. But we have four letters here and four letters there. So we're splitting it up in half. And up at the top, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have an A here. I'm gonna have a B here, an A here, and I'm gonna have a B right here. B, A, B, A. And I ended right about that middle place. Now, Yaga, Y, A, G, A. Baba, Yaga. Okay, now we have to have plenty of room down here to make our skulls and fences. So I'm gonna see this place. I'm, you don't need to draw a line there, but I'm gonna just show you what I mean. From the bottom of the writing to the bottom of the page, we're gonna go about in the middle. And we're gonna draw a line, very faint, just so we can see the line. You can use yellow or brown, just a very faint line. You can't even see the line I drew, but I'm gonna put my finger here where I think is about the middle, and that's where I'm going to start my house. So I'm gonna put a line like that for the bottom of the house. The chicken legs will come down there. I'm gonna make the house a little bigger than I did in my drawing. A little bit bigger than that, a little bit wider, so it's gonna go you know, from way out here to way out there. But the peak of the house is going to be up here. I'm going to come way up right in, right into my words, right up into my where I wrote. And I'm going to choose a different color so that you can see it better. But you can use yellow to start, as usual, so that you can see what you're doing a little bit better. I mean, so that you can correct it if you want to. I'm going to start way up here, not the very tippy top, but just a little bit down, kind of right in the middle of where those letters are. And I'm going to make two lines. I don't want to make them go way out here, but I certainly don't want them to be too tight. I want them to come out a good way out here. Okay? That's why we do our form drawings, so we can control, we can see where we want to go. That's the, the house roof. And then I'm not going to start drawing down here, but I'm going to come up here, somewhere here. Let's put this in yellow also, or in gold. And I'm going to draw a line like that. And I'm going to make sure that these just join. So I'm going to choose a spot. And if I end up without, with this line too long, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to just aim for that spot. And if yours is too far out or you need to change this, that's fine. I can see this one's a little higher than that one, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's a little old hut, and that's a good start. Now, now I'm going to draw another line. And I'm going to draw a line from here to here, from the place where these two lines come together the place where those two lines come together. But since mine's going to be a little crooked, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go up a little higher to try and make, to try and, or down a little bit over there, to try and make that a straight line that goes across. And there's my house. All right, now up in the, up here is going to be a window. And I'm going to make that window bigger than I had made it in my, bigger than I made it in this picture. I'm going to make it a little larger so I can more easily draw a cat up there. Make that a pretty big window up there. square up there, isn't there? Oh, that's funny. There's a square right here. And I see some triangles, too. I see three triangles, at least in mine. Actually, this one is a, uh, this one's not quite a triangle because it really has four sides. One, see, it has one, two, three, and there's a little bit of a thing there. So that's kind of more of a, a different shape, quadrilateral. All right, here we go. So I do see triangles there. I see a square there. And I guess this one would be more of a rectangle. Now I'm going to make a rectangle for the door. And the door, uh, actually first I'm going to draw another line across. This is like separating the upstairs from the downstairs. Okay, And we'll decorate that in a little while. And then I'm going to make a door. I'm going to make a pretty big door so that I can fit Baba Yaga in the doorway. I'm going to make it too 
these at all. Okay, there's that. So now, um, now it's time to go back and um, I think it would be more fun to do the chicken legs first. So the chicken legs are going to come down. I'm going to put two chicken legs. I'm going to use the side of my crayon to come down like that. Another one over here. And then I'm going to put the chicken feet on there. And the chicken feet, I'm going to make three feet, three toes. And they can just start like that. One, two, and then one going the other way, three. And then I'm going to put this little spike on that chicken leg too. And then I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. I'm going to make two facing out this way. One, two, one facing in, and then another spike. Okay, now I'm going to thicken up these toes a little bit at the base. I'm going to leave them pointy at the end, but I'm going to thicken them up a little bit. Those little connect them up there a little bit. I guess I don't like that. Now I'll go through it. And uh, this side too. Okay. So that's that. That's good enough for now. Now, can you imagine having a house that could walk around like that? That would be pretty cool. Maybe a little too scary. Your house, you wouldn't have to stay in one place, would you? Go wherever you want. All right. So now, uh, I did use mostly red, red and brown in this, red, brown, and orange. But I think we need to go ahead and get our Baba Yaga and our cat drawn, even though it's a little tempting to do some of the decorations first. I guess we could do the outside decorations. I'm gonna, I don't have a red, so I'm gonna use, I guess I'm gonna use this pink. We'll see how it works. I think I'd rather have orange, actually, but let's see, those are both the same color. I'll use the pink. So these are the log. This is a log house. So you can use red and draw a log here and log there. And then just keep on coming up. Another one. Don't make them too small. It'll take forever. And some logs are bigger than others. So if some of the circles end up bigger than others, that's OK. So these are the ends of the logs. They use a log house. They make them like that, right? So you're seeing this end of the log. The log house, they lay one down there, they put another one there, and what you're seeing here is the end of the log. You could just draw the circles and then come back and fill them in later. I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. I'm going to try to match that. Four, five, six. And now I can fill them in. You're using red or brown, probably. Okay, make them about the same size if I need to. Yep, that'll do for that. So then I want to draw the Baba Yaga soon, but um, I guess we'll continue getting the, um, the, the house made. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, kind of a faint line to show that the lo there's logs on this side too. I'm going to start in the middle of a circle. I'm going to skip the doorway, and I'm going to go to the middle of that circle. Middle of this circle. Skip the doorway, middle of that circle. And I'm going to keep going from the middle of each log to the doorway, from the middle of each log, approximately, to the doorway, like so. OK? Now I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a decoration up. Well, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to draw the Baba Yaga. Now, I'm going to use um, brown, I guess, but you could use brown or black for the Baba Yaga. So the, actually, I needed brown and black for mine. So this is like her dress or skirt. This is sort of a shawl, and those are her arms and her face. So here, about halfway, I'm going to draw. That's like her skirt. OK, I'm just going to color that in so I feel more comfortable that that's the bottom part of her body. And then up at the top, I'm going to, I made some really wild, crazy wild hair on her. So up here, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a, a sort of a, a 
egg-shaped head. I'm gonna put a long nose on it. I'm gonna put a wicked grin on it, like almost like a pumpkin. And I'm gonna make two eyes. How did I do that? I think I just made two sort of lines to make eyes. And then I'm gonna put uh, hair. So I had a, some hair going this way, some hair going this way, flying around wild hair. Crazy wild witch hair. I don't know how that's gonna turn out, but oh well. Crazy wild witch hair flying in all directions. If I cover up the eyes, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna put one arm coming out this way. So I've got, so right underneath her, her head, I'm just gonna bring an arm up this way. And this is her hand. Not, I'm not really gonna draw all her fingers. I'm just kind of making a shape of a hand up there. And then I'm gonna draw another hand out this way arm out that way. I'm gonna make arms nice and long. It's easy to make arms too short when you're drawing something. I don't know if you can see that well enough, honestly. Maybe you can. I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of a lighter color so it's maybe easier to see. I don't know if that helps or not. And then I'm gonna switch colors. I'm gonna switch to purple. I only have a few colors of chalk here, but I used brown in my drawing to put a shawl shape around there where her arms are coming out. So I, I'm gonna use purple here. So I, I started, so the, the brown dress actually comes, I'm just gonna put that up there like that. And I'm gonna cover that up with a shawl. So I put the rest of her body up there and then the shawl is kind of like that. Okay, get that. And just comes up there over her shoulder like that and then I can color that in. Now that's awfully purple for my taste. I'm gonna just add a little, a little purple to this dress and I'm gonna add a little brown to the shawl so that they match a little better. And I think this should be more of a curved line here. A little more of a curved line instead of straight. Okay, I didn't color in her face because later I'm going to take my crayon, my my black, my side of my one of my block crayons, and I'm going to cover the whole thing. Okay, so that's good for her for the moment. And now let's see what time it is. Oh, getting kind of late. All right, so I'm going to just talk you through the um, the cat and the skulls and see if uh, we can finish here in the next couple of minutes. Otherwise, I'll post it. Um, the picture of this drawing and of the chalk version right on the website so that you can see what those look like. So the cat, I did like this. The cat, the main thing about a cat, to make it look like a cat, I think there's a couple things. One is you gotta have a couple ears. So I just do the ears first. It's hard to see that, isn't it? I do the ears like that. And then I just kind of made the shape of a cat's head like that. And then I just went like this, like that. And I put, so that you could, maybe there's one leg there, and I put a tail like that, and it's pretty cat-like already. I don't have to worry too much about the cat. All right. I guess I put another, I put another line there, for two legs, maybe like that. Okay. And I could put a couple little eyes. And then there's a little trick to making it. See, I couldn't do it on my, my chalk, my, my um, crayon drawing. But on this one is big enough that I could do this little shape that sort of says cat. It's like their nose shape like that. And you could even put a whisk, whisker or two on there. All right. So now the rest of that, I'm just going to go quickly 
and copy a little bit of what I did right here. I suppose really what I should do is do a one, one of the legs, bo the bones here. So with the bones, I'm going to, I guess I'll continue to use brown. A bone fence, a uh, bone is made like this. So it's almost like a heart shape, like that. And then I just go down. And then toward the bottom, I just do a, a, a similar thing like that. Okay, there's one. I'm going to put another one right here. Start like a heart shape. Straight down. Do an upside down version of it at the bottom. And then we could put one across. I'm not going to put one across this middle part. I'm just going to put one across here. So it's going to be behind, behind these two. There's another one that goes across like that. And that sticks out over there. And then the tricky part is the skull. So the skull, I'm going to make a little bigger than I made in my picture also. So it's a little bit easier. The skull shape is like a head shape. But instead of making the bottom like a nice egg, you kind of cut in a little bit. Come down like you're going to make this nice egg. And you just cut in a little bit and make the bottom part a little more like that. What, I don't know what to, what to call that shape. And then you just two big eyes triangle nose and then you can kind of do whatever with the teeth like that okay and then we'll keep on doing gluing those across but I do need to stop because I see it's really time is up so again I'll post the rest of this picture when I finish it on the computer and I think you'll be able to copy the rest from there it's a matter of putting some decorations there <clears throat> and like I said that one of the tricks is going to be to take your block your your block crayon and you're gonna fill in everything. You're gonna go right over everything. I just took my block crayon and went over the entire drawing. It doesn't look as good with chalk. <clears throat> I took my brown, I took one of my purples, and I t even took my black block crayon and I went over the whole thing just very lightly. And I did do, in this one, I did put some green in the background but I didn't bother drawing trees. I just, I just kind of just put some green shapes like that in the background, a little bit tree-like. I colored this first with my green block crayon. And I left that all green. I brought the green up here. And then I went back over with my purple my brown and my black very lightly. I just went over the entire thing, even the bones. Because in the end, just get some color over the whole thing. OK, well, that was great. Uh, <clears throat> really enjoyed telling that story to you. Happy Halloween to you. And happy Dia de los Muertes. That's the Day of the Dead, which is uh, November 1st. So on November 2nd, which is the first school day after that, I'll try to have something to present to you. All right. Be well. Do good work and keep in touch.